There's a popular saying that goes, if Britney survived 2007, you can survive today. But what contributed to her public and private struggles, and what can we learn from her trials and tribulations that have contributed to pop culture as we know it today? We're about to find out. We've got a panel of Britney experts here today, ranging from diehard stands to people have a more complicated relationship with the pop star. We have like a spectrum here. It's like straight to gay. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Britney Spears? She was born on a holy day, December 2nd, 1981, in Kentwood, Louisiana, to Jamie and Lynn Spears. At age 11, Britney is accepted into the Mickey Mouse Club, and she goes on to sign with Jive Records and becomes an opening act for NSYNC. Britney became a star pretty quickly. In 1998, at the age of 17, she released Baby One More Time. The album Baby One More Time became the biggest selling LP by a teenage artist ever. I think the music video is what made it go crazy. The whole video was her idea. The whole like schoolroom thing. She tied up her shirt all on her own. She was in charge of her vision from day one. I was officially a gay man. I think that's very smart, but I love the way how you said she pulled up and tied her shirt as if she like just fucking solved gravity. That was so iconic. Tell me you didn't it, do no, that. No, it's iconic, but like people did that before her too. I mean, we're still talking about it. True. True. There's no argument. She became the biggest pop star in the world. From the beginning, the media has always had a fascination with Britney's sexuality. In 2000, at the MTV Movie Awards, Britney ripped away a black suit to reveal a crystal nude bodysuit, which was considered controversial at the time because she was only 19 years old. Girl Scout moms in my group thought she was a bad role model. She once again sparked controversy at the 2001 VMAs when she performed scantily clad with a python wrapped around her shoulders. Also, this huge speculation over her first public relationship with the infamous Justin Timberlake. You guys remember their AMA's outfit where they were dressed in all denim, Who right? Who doesn't remember that outfit? <laughs> <laughs> I know. That will go in like a museum. The media was instantly infatuated with their relationship, but the fairy tale was not meant to last. Britney and Justin broke up in 2002. It was rumored they split because Britney was cheating and she never directly denied these allegations. Justin really wants you to know that Britney cheated on him. Cry Me a River was his huge, like, first song. Because his of what? Britney. It was about Britney. <laughs> he put this woman with blonde hair, gave her that pink hat, and he made it into his first big hit, and that pushed him into pop stardom. Before that, he was just a member of NSYNC. I want to know what Jessica Biel thinks about this. Right. I don't know. She's too busy running O Fudge. <laughs> <laughs> Justin publicly stated that during their relationship, they had sex, which was a big deal considering Britney talked a lot about her virginity. There is a rule in the book, the Bible, that says that. I think that is a really important thing to do. For some reason, parents wouldn't let their kids listen to young women singing unless they proclaimed they were virgins. I mean, she was a teenager. Just because someone was expressing their sexuality on stage didn't mean you can ask such personal questions off stage. I think she set the mold for Disney Channel stars and Nickelodeon stars, because we saw Miley Cyrus kind of took the same cycle. Also, this time she dropped her fourth album, In The Zone. This is when Toxic is released, every straight person's favorite Britney song. She returned to the VMA stage with Madonna, Christina Aguilera. Oh my god, the kiss. Actually, two kisses, but everyone forgets about the Christina Madonna kiss. I mean, Missy Elliott was there too, but who talks about Missy? Missy Elliott? was there? I was raised Mormon, so for me, that was like a little bit of a shock, but you know, it spoke to me a little bit because I knew that I was, you know, this queer little boy. I know, it's like two women kissing define the adolescences of gay men, basically. Yeah. Someone could do that in the middle of the street now. Oh yeah, but at the time. It made her more of a news story. With Madonna as her model, Britney Spears has upset a lot of mothers in this country. Really, if I had an opportunity to, to shoot Britney Spears, I think I would. Oh, that's horrible. Well, she People say it's kind of the beginning of the downfall for Britney in a way. Would you say this like intense fascination with her public appearance uh, sort of is also indicative of like celebrity and paparazzi culture at the time period? Oh, 100%. Doesn't matter which lives they ruined, if they could follow Britney Spears around, get a good shot of her, they could, you know, live pretty well for the next few months. And if you also look at her in photos during this time period, going to gas stations and just not wearing much, getting Cheetos. I don't know, I look at her just going to the gas station in Uggs a little liberating for her because she's not feeling like she has to get all gussied up and 
you know, being Britney Spears, this perfect package. She's a human. Okay. But behind the Is scenes, she she's okay. Yes. yes. Following her iconic MTV performance, Britney's personal life takes a strange turn. Britney marries her childhood friend Jason Alexander in a Las Vegas wedding. Well, it technically never happened because That's it was an old, annulled, so. She could forget it happened. Just... The marriage lasts 55 hours. She just became this mega, mega, mega star, and that was something more simple, something that she was probably nostalgic for. Christian, you're getting real deep about this, and like, there are a lot well, of things to get it, real deep about. How can but it let's not be, be real she, deep? They were drunk in Vegas, got married, had it annulled, and I think that's okay to say. Right, that but happens. there are I motives. Have three college friends who did the same thing. I think there was something a little more than just being drunk. To make matters worse, Britney had to cancel her highly anticipated Onyx Hotel tour because she injured her knee on a music video shoot. And I think after that, I mean, she hasn't really ever moved the same way because she was such a great dancer and that's yeah. what she was really, really, really known for. Kind of stuck with her to this day. It has, yeah. I know if you're like super busy, it's hard to confront your problems no matter what they are. You're not thinking about it. But for the first time, she finally had to take a pause and step back. It was kind of like a huge turning point. This brings us to another infamous name in Britney's life, Kevin Federline. A 25-year-old high school dropout from Fresno, California, he and his ex-girlfriend, Char Jackson, had one child together and another on the way. Spears became enamored with the club fixture known as Meat Pole. Yeah. Meat Pole? You, you're not attracted to that, Nick? No, for some reason that doesn't get my juices flowing. Later that year, she proposed to Kevin Federline. Britney Spears could have had anyone on the planet, but. I can see why yeah. she chose him, yes. look, looks wise. Like, Definitely a career low for her, I mean. And then Chaotic, the show on UPN. It's kind of interesting to see how we fell in love, got in fights, everything, you know, it's just kind of there. I don't know how much of fights it shows. Well, it doesn't show all the fights, but you can feel the tension. Oh my God, <laughs> RIP UPN. On September 14th, 2005, Brittany gave birth to her first child. Sean Preston Federline. In 2006, she gave birth to her second son with Federline, Jaden. On several occasions, the paparazzi caught Brittany in compromising positions with her children. Sean sitting improperly in a baby seat. And what are the circumstances? She was trying to get away from the paparazzi. She was trying to protect her kid and it was like the quickest way to get out of that situation. And she was being followed, not just by like one or two photographers at a time, like, Dozens. I couldn't live under that microscope. That's she insane. She couldn't go anywhere. She couldn't go anywhere. We just need privacy and we need our respect. And, and those are things that you have to have as a human. If someone's following you 24 seven, are you gonna be perfect 24 seven? Oh. Absolutely not. Media speculation about her parenting resulted in the LA Department of Child and Family Services to investigate her. Brittany broke up with Kevin Federline after two years of marriage. She was a rapper, right? Yeah. Oh God. Oh. Never trust a white guy in cornrows. Was the, fir the first song was called Popazow. Oh my God, I remember, yes. Following the announcement of her divorce, Britney is seen partying it up with none other than Paris Hilton and Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, this was the start of Britney's excessive partying. She is under the influence of alcohol and you don't know what else is going on. There are these famous images of her exiting the car um, with her hoo-ha showing to the world. At that point, there was nothing she could do that was off limits to anyone. In February, Hollywood.com reports that an email from her assistant says that Britney was spiraling out of control and her family wanted her to get treatment. Britney Spears checked into rehab and left in less than 24 hours. Britney went to a hair salon in Tarzana, California. She was reportedly complaining about her hair extensions being too tight. The salon owner refused to cut her hair, so Britney grabbed the clippers and she did it herself. We saw photos. Every moment of this whole weekend was heavily documented. I know there's like conspiracies as to why she did it, but like she said, she was tired of everyone touching her. You know, she was constantly told what to do and pulled and pushed. And I think it was her kind of liberating herself in a way like I'm shaving my head. That Britney, gone. Our first thought when we were seeing this, say, oh, Britney's so crazy. Yeah, like at the time, I didn't understand the whole mental health aspect about it. I don't think any of us really did. 
And so she just became the butt of the joke. I don't think it came as a surprise to anyone because that's where we were pushing her. In September 2007, a judge ordered Britney Spears to submit to random drug tests. In October 2007, Federline is awarded sole custody of the kids and Spears' visitation rights with her children were also suspended until she complied with court orders in their custody battle. After she was asked how she was doing, Spears was filmed telling reporters, quote, eat it, snort it, lick it, fuck it. And she's also speaking in a British accent to paparazzi at this time. In the midst of all this personal drama, Britney's team strong-armed her into performing at the VMAs. Obviously the performance of someone who was struggling with a lot of stuff. For the performance, she had to wear a wig because her hair was still growing back. She stayed out until 2.30 a.m. that night. Forget, you know, appearance, because people have made uh, comments about her, uh, her not being in peak shape. She looked downright out of it. Was she ever going to win over the general public at that point? I mean, we were in the middle of lighting her on fire, you know? They wanted that to happen. Yeah. Despite all these personal struggles in 2007, Britney manages to release quite possibly her best album yet, Blackout. A, a piece of light in a very dark, dark time. I think after seeing headline after headline being like her career's over, her career's over, her fans were over her, she still releases a good body of work. It was her only album to join the archives of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. After Blackout's release, Britney Spears was hospitalized after locking herself in the bathroom with her youngest son, Jaden, for three hours and refusing to hand him over to her ex-husband, Kevin Federline. Later in the month, Britney Spears is hospitalized again and a motorcade of police vehicles and a police helicopter took her in an ambulance at 1 a.m. Her mother also encouraged Dr. Phil to visit Britney in the psychiatric ward of Cedars-Sinai Medical Center at this time. Dr. Phil immediately went around and told the press everything. In 2008, Britney Spears begins being controlled by a guardianship, a court-approved conservatorship for people who are deemed incapable of taking care of themselves. This is like a major turning point in her life. I think why she committed to the conservatorship was so she could have some custody of her kids, so she could see her kids. All she cared about was her children. There's a lot of good things that can come out of structure and some certain limits. She kind of like went into a hiding a bit. You didn't see her everywhere. You didn't see all these Britney controversies. It gets sticky when you think about her dad and the money he makes from being a conservator. If she's being forced into a studio at gunpoint, we have no idea. And they're priming her up for this huge comeback. At the 2008 VMAs, a year after the Gimme More performance. Was it really only a year? Only a year. Was it too soon for her? Hopefully their cycle just doesn't repeat itself, where she feels like too many people are around her and controlling her. If what happened in Britney's career in 2007 happened today in 2018, how would it play out differently? People are way more empathetic to issues surrounding mental health. I will say that sometimes I feel like people still haven't even learned this because if yeah. you look at Amanda Bynes and her time, it was the same exact process. None of us want to be watched like that, so I don't understand why you can watch someone laugh at them, but I'm gonna go mess up. <laughs> in private, because I have that ability to. Do you guys think we've made any progress in the way that media treats and portrays women's bodies and sexuality? Now we're in a place where we're talking about it and you know, people are admitting things and being vocal. I see as time goes on, we're kind of like reclaiming our sexuality and trying to figure out, you know, what it means to be a woman. I think we can describe Brittany as a trailblazer. She could have just crawled back to Louisiana. We would be talking about like, whatever happened to Britney Spears? But the mere fact that she came back and stronger than ever is right. pretty impressive. Before her, Vegas was kind of seen as like, you're getting a little older as an artist, have a Vegas residency, get some good money in your last years. Britney turned that into, you can go while you're still the young artist you are, make good money, people will come see you from all around the world. And now look, everyone's coming to Vegas. Yeah, she is a trailblazer, so it's exciting to see. She's only 35, 36. Which I think is the age that you qualify to run for president of the United States. I, I can't handle that. <laughs> I,